In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the newly released ASRock X870E Tai Chi from ASRock. So this is meant to accompany the new AMD Ryzen 9000 series processors. So these feature the newest Zen 5 architecture. So shout out to RK Benchmarker for providing this to me so I can do testing and make a lot of content like this, for example. Just to start off, this is a heavy box. This is going to be the flagship motherboard from ASRock, this generation for their new X870 line. You can see, so just look at the back here. It has a real fully loaded I.O. and all this stuff. But anyway, 24 phase VRM. Probably the highest end VRM in terms of the phase count. But let's open it up here, see what's inside. So to start off, it looks like it comes with what looks like the Wi-Fi antenna in here. So if we open this up, yeah, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. So you get a magnetic Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, I believe, on here. So that is actually really nice that they have that. Kind of standard on this type of board. And then this motherboard is really heavy. So we're going to move that to the side and take a look at what's in here. We'll come back to that in a second. Just to open this up, so it looks like there is two SATA, two more SATA, so you get four SATA. This motherboard supports six SATA, and all of them support, so six SATA total, but you get four cables, so that's pretty good. We're starting to see a lot less of these in the box, so it's nice to see them at least still provide four. And then this is a, looks like a splitter cable for ARGB. They've got you covered there. You can sync them to the motherboard. And then on the other side here, it looks like there is a looks like there's a Tai Chi keycap. So you could change uh, any of the keys, I guess, to this. Or the T key, I guess, Tai Chi. It is compatible with Cherry MX switches. A 24 volt. This is like a I think this is for audio measurements or thermal header measurements. If you wanted to really do a lot of tuning in terms of the noise in the case and the fan profiles. And then regulatory notices are in here as well as a quick installation guide. So just basic steps on how to put the computer together. So that is it for what's inside. Pretty standard stuff. All right, for the motherboard, the motherboard itself is very heavy. This is a very heavy board. And an anti-static bag. This is a flagship board. It feels heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. We flip it around, look at the back. It has a full back plate. So really, really good. Full back plate included. This is a $449 motherboard, so it's coming in $50 cheaper than the competition, which would be the Strix E from Asus, or the MSI Carbon, or the Gigabyte Aorus Master. So those are the equivalent to this, but this is coming in $50 less than those while offering an E-ATX. You can see the final screw hole, it extends beyond your standard ATX. So it's a very wide motherboard overall. It has a nice, RGB, whatever this is, this LCD, LED panel, I guess. So just to take a quicker look at the board. So it's got, you know, 24 phase VRM. It has some really nice heat sinks on the VRM. As you can see there, that is really tall in terms of the VRM coverage. It has the latches on both the top and the bottom of the memory. That is nice to see. Moving along the side here, at the top we have the postcode debug, the power and reset button, as well as some ARGB. Then it has a fan pump header and a CPU fan 1 and CPU fan 2. So it's nice that it has dual CPU fan headers. Then over here, there's dual EPS 12 volt connectors for the CPU socket. And then it has the 24 pin over here, USB. 3.0 for the front panel, USB 3.2 header, has 6 SATA, and then it has down at the bottom, it has the front panel connectors, the speaker header, which I like to see that, 
because some vendors like Asus are not providing that anymore. So it's nice to see that ASRock still supports this. A clear CMOS short jumper, which you don't have to use because the back has the clear CMOS button, but it is nice that they have that there for convenience. And then another USB 3.0, another pump header, a three chassis fan headers at the bottom here, nicely spaced apart from each other. That's one of the advantages of having an EATX because it gives you that wider PCB. And then two USB 2.0, and then a, the sensors for temperature sensor, I believe, and then more ARGB, an RGB LED header, and then the onboard audio. So that's it for the connectors. Let's take a look at the back real quick. So the back is fully loaded. You have a clear CMOS and a BIOS flash, Wi-Fi 7, HDMI, a whole bunch of USB type A. So we have, uh, this looks like probably 5 gig, 10 gig, 5 gig, 2.0, and more 10 gig, over 10 here and 5 here, and then a 5 gig LAN, optical audio, and you have your normal audio, and then we have dual USB 4 from the Asmedia 4242 chipset as well. So very nice in terms of, like, if you're going to plug a whole bunch of USB devices in, it's got you covered there. So that is nice to see. On to the PCI lane configuration. So this motherboard does not share any lanes between the GPU and any of the M.2 drives. This is a no-nonsense board. However, the bottom slot is an X8 slot that pulls eight lanes from the top slot if you're going to run something in here. So just be aware if you use both of these slots, they both will run at X8. But other than that, if you're not using the second slot, then the top slot is always 16, regardless of however many M.2s you're running. So speaking of the M.2s, the, the top one here is Gen 5. And then over here next to the RAM, there is a Gen 4 SSD. The nice thing about these, they have that toolless quick disconnect. So you basically... I'll just demonstrate it here. Push this little circle down toward this. You push it down and then it just comes up like that. It has the thermal pad on both the top and the bottom. So, and they actually have full coverage here. I like how they've done this one. This is better than some of the other ones that I've seen. This is a thick pad that runs all the way across on both sides. So it's, it's really nice like that. And then the other one's the same way. Just goes down like that and then it comes up. And there you go, thermal pads on both sides. So this is the Gen 5 one. They are different looking, but they have the same weight. So I wonder how well this will cool an actual Gen 5 drive. These two are almost the same, but just remember that this is the Gen 5 slot. This is the Gen 4 slot. And then if you need additional M.2, there are two more under here. So we'd have to remove this. So it's not 100% toolless. So if you're going for 100% toolless in this $500 price segment, a Gigabyte, the Gigabyte Aorus Master and the MSI Carbon, those two are 100% toolless, whereas the Strix and this Tai Chi still have some of the drives requiring you to remove screws. So it's four screws there. And then on the bottom side, we have two more thermal pads. These do not have pads on the bottom side, only on the top side. So that's a little bit of a bummer there to see that those aren't covered there. There's nothing in the box to add these thermal pads. ASRock now, just like with MSI, they now also have the quick disconnect. So it is a latch. You just pull on it. There's a spring in there that will move this down so you can get the GPU out. So that is nice to see on there. So overall, this is what I consider a no-nonsense flagship motherboard. It has the RGB. If you don't want the RGB and you want to save $50, you can get the Tai Chi Lite. The one thing that the Tai Chi Lite lacks, however, is it does not have this latch, which is very convenient if you have a giant air cooler, for example, on the a CPU. Because sometimes those giant Noctuas, for example, they, like, they'll come up to here and you can barely, especially with an offset mount, you can't really reach the tab. So having something like this is extremely useful for GPU upgrades. So overall though, this is a solid flagship board. I definitely consider this an S tier board. You're getting a lot of value. The backplate is a really nice addition. A lot of the competition 
from the other vendors. You know, you have to pay more than $500 if you want a backplate. Azrock's giving you a backplate at $450. And even on the Nova, the Nova is a $350 board from Azrock that also has a backplate. Overall, a very good motherboard. It feels very high quality. If you like this sort of content and you're interested in choosing one of these motherboards, get subscribed to the channel, check out some of the videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.